I'm coming for you. I couldn't miss the party. Too simple. Dodge this! Oh, I'm got I couldn't miss the party. Oh, ah. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. Oh, I'm gonna hurt you! Not that easy! I'm coming. Ah. <clears throat> Don't bother moving. You've lost. Coming for you. Too simple. The snuff's ready. I'm coming. Get ready for some pain. Time to knock this guy out. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you. Give him the pepper snuff. He's all yours now. Go for it. <coughs> Take a rest, my friend. Too simple. The snuff's ready. Time to knock this guy out. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you until next month. Okay, okay, I give up, I give up. And here we are, Miss Sevigny. A place where we can talk about all your recent activities. We have a nice profile on you, you know. And what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Is there nothing you didn't do, Miss Sevigny? Thieve for the gang, break into the Armour Capello office, kill Niccolo Detti? I... What? Kill? I didn't kill nobody. No, I... How? So you admit the rest. I suppose you won't mind explaining some things to me then.
You were in the Armour Capello office yesterday evening, Miss Sevigny. The same place that Niccolò Detti was found dead today. What happened? How would you know? You can't prove anything? It's written all over you, Miss Sevigny. I presume you did not intend your evening to end with a fall over the railing and a fracas with felines? I Need I continue? I... Oh, zut alors. It was just a job, nothing else. I was asked to come. Here, see for yourself. I... I don't know who hired me, but I think they wanted to pin the crime on me. Poor Niccolo. You knew Mr. Detty, how? Niccolo and I grew up together. I hadn't seen him in years, then ran into him on the street, smiling with some lovely lady on his arm. Nico and that was the last time you saw him alive? Wait, well, until I found him dead yesterday. That same woman was there, too. It can't be coincidence. Well, you saw a woman in the office? Mm-hmm. She started screaming, so I slammed the safe door and ran when I saw a guard coming. When were you offered this job? Ah, oh, mon dieu. Um, I don't remember precisely. I, I think the letter arrived around 9.30 in the evening. It sounded tricky, but the money was good. Ah, oh, mon dieu. And you arrived at the office? Perhaps 45 minutes later. I am very good, sir. I was in and out in five minutes. But I don't like lies. No, no, wait. Um, okay. It took 15 minutes. All right? Still impressive, no? Your thieving days may well be over, Miss Sevigny. Until this matter is resolved, you will remain here. Good day. Your th What exactly was your relationship with Niccolò Detti? Uh, who? Uh, what are you talking about? Madam, please. A young woman dedicated her music and an enthusiastic artist. Your marriage to Basilio could not have offered all you needed. And then about six months ago, you met Niccolò Detti. There was a spark. You started to see each other. It brought passion back into your life. And How c could you? But your tryst didn't go unnoticed. Felicia Sevigny spotted you with Niccolo, but rather than cease your affair, you took care to avoid the public eye. But you started working with your husband at the office, and met your lover there in the evening after Basilio departed. You Billy would not notice, and you hoped neither would your husband. Do I have this right so far? I... Yes. I love Basilio, I truly do. But his first passion is his work. I, I respect that, but it left me adrift. I... Niccolo. <laughs> Sweet Niccolo. He was the man I needed. If he had had any other name, I... I would have talked to Basilio. But he was a detti. Niccolo. And your husband suspected something. I... I think he did. He asked questions. Billy's schedule was moved forwards, he... Yes. Yes, he suspected. I... And thus, we arrive at the heart of the matter. How did Mr. Detty end up deceased in the safe? And I... I do not know. Madam? I don't know anything about his death. Are you sure this is how you wish to proceed? It is the truth. Please, 
Just leave me be. It is a shame it has come to this, but it is patently obvious that you are responsible for Niccolò Detti's death. Oh, how dare you? I wouldn't want him to. I... I see you need some persuasion. I know that Niccolò Detti went to the office to meet you. It was a midnight tryst. Niccolò would visit the office once Basilio left, but this time he returned. So you hid Niccolò in the safe. A foolish move. It was... I didn't know the code had changed. It was the only choice. I, c I couldn't let him be found. I loved him. Really? You could have saved his life by simply speaking with your husband, but you sought to free him another way. To free Mr. Detty, you hired Felicia Sevigny, a petty burglar, to crack the safe. And as a result, you killed your lover. To f no. I... It's because the combination had changed. It is not my fault. You are splitting hairs, Mrs. Capello. The fact remains you chose to risk Niccolo's life rather than call your husband. And I know why. You were afraid how it would affect the reputation of the Capellos, and you feared what your husband would do as a consequence. You it's... I... He's a good man, but... He cares about his business, about the family. It would have destroyed him. And now he's accused of murder, Mrs. Capello. How considerate of you. I... Mio Dio, how did this all happen? Despite your best intentions, Mrs. Capello, I believe you are to blame for this sorry affair, not Basilio. I... I think you're right, sir. Basilio, he... he does not deserve this. None of this. I... It is not my place to decide what is deserved, but perhaps you now know what to say to the inspector. It... I do. Good day, madam. I don't think Mrs. Capello did this on purpose. I would have let her go. Come on, Sherry. Say, I am the law.
Nice to see you. Oh, so it has taken root. What's taken root? As I recall, when we were growing up, this theatre didn't welcome kids. You've forgotten, John. Come to the back entrance and I'll refresh your memory. Yet I still see nothing. You need to focus, my dear friend. Watch me. Here was our glorious stage. Ring any bells? Ah, oh, we don't need to dwell on the past, Sherry. And Hamlet's mother, Gertrude, taking poison. What was the name of that girl? Oh, uh, Georgina, of course. She was our neighbour. Oh, I remember her. She liked you. And there you were, the best supporting actor. My silent scene partner, my Yorick. Your presence inspired me and brought me to tears. Yeah, it hurt to know that's all I could be. Inspiration. I couldn't even play the king's ghost. How's that for irony? To be or not to be? <laughs> Indeed. I know why you wanted to forget. The show forced you to confront your limits, except no one else would ever see you but me. Why do you think I cried? In the end, the audience was thrilled. I can still hear their roars after the final act. You were so pleased with yourself when the theatre director came down to admire your work. He applauded. A huge gesture from a man for whom children on stage was an anathema. One small step for a man, one giant leap for students of the dramatic arts. Childhood is a time of naivety. I cannot now imagine seeking a career as an actor, drinking wine all day and gaily treading the boards at night. Yet you often pretend to be someone else in your search for the truth. You can't act like this side or you've disappeared completely. Quite. This above all to thine own self be true. <laughs>
Treasure maps from the governor. Find eight and come back for more. Does it look remotely familiar to you? A large crowd gathered. I was here, young and passionate about the truth. Mycroft stood close to me. He was keen on my attending every official event that I might prepare myself for the Crown service. Lucky for you, that was the last time he did it. There was a stage here. A tribute. The governor gave his speech there. He was lying through his teeth and nobody noticed, or didn't want to, but I noticed. I was extremely irritated by his lies. I shouted my opinions very loudly for everyone to hear. The crowd went wild. Mycroft was angry, but calm. He led me away from the stage. He told me that I should keep my mouth shut, and that silence is golden. I couldn't stand for that. Behold, Sherlock Holmes's famous adherence to justice was born here.
Karim of the Silver Hand, the pirate with a golden heart. I told you I remembered him. Hey Sherlock, I'm up here. Guess what I've found? A riddle, and it's about a treasure. Listen to this. What? John, you've surpassed yourself. Come on, Sherry. This is just like the old days. Sherlock and John on a pirate's treasure adventure. So the treasure is real, but tell me, John, how did you even guess there would be something on top of the monument? Didn't I ever tell you about my psychic abilities? I should have. I even know where we ought to go next.
I always admire the way you notice such details. In such moments, I often recall Mother's voice teaching us of the importance of the smaller details. The world hangs on small hinges, John. Even the most chaotic miracle becomes sequential when you take a closer look. I remember. Far over the misty water cold. Wait, what? Is this Mother's magnifying glass? How did it end up here? What happened? Sherry, you really need to learn to let miracles happen. The whole world is one big, unresolved, chaotic miracle. But they will become sequential if you take a closer look. I do remember what Mother told us, but that explains nothing. Just let things happen, all right? Besides, this little miracle will look perfect in our manner, don't you think? Thank you.